Why are you pushing this bill that would legalize hate and homophobia in Ghana? A very good afternoon to your viewers. And I do not understand what you mean by pushing a bill that would legalize hate and homophobia. It's a bill to promote proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values. If you have another bill you're talking about, then maybe you've got the wrong man. But if you're talking to me about the bill I'm sponsoring in Parliament, it is to promote proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values. What are these so Ghanaian family, family values in your mind, that. sir? What do you consider Ghanaian family values? Article 39 of the Ghanaian Constitution is clear that the state shall take steps to inculcate the right Ghanaian values, customary values, into society. The Constitution of Ghana makes the states clearly that the National House of Chiefs is the custodian of Ghana's custom. This bill is supported by the Ghana National House of Chiefs. Our fourth consultative uh, forum, which was held in the Shanti regional capital of Kumasi, was actually sponsored by the National House of Chiefs. And the president of the National House of Chiefs spoke extensively at that conference where Ghanaian culture forbids homosexuality. And so Ghanaian and these, culture... These members of the LGBT community, LGBT community we're speaking to sir, are also Ghanaians. They are also Ghanaian. They are part of Ghanaian culture. And they're saying they're gay, they're transsexual, they're bisexual. They are also Ghanaians. Some of the individuals who were involved in planning terror attacks in America are American citizens. Is it American culture to kill people? That's a false, that's, a, that, that's not the same comparison. But what I want to focus on here is... It's not the same comparison. You are telling me that because we have people who are carrying out an activity that is illegal per our laws already, and our culture frowns on it because they are found in our jurisdiction, that is our culture. There is were it many American things that were illegal that, that are unjust. Children and teachers? Honorable MP, there are many things that were illegal that were unjust, and those laws were changed because they are unjust. Well, laws are a reflection of society. Until 1960, American society did not find women fit to vote. And so women did not vote there. When they found them fit and to so vote, society evolved. Society evolves. At this point in time, the Ghanaian society is in a position where it says it is not welcoming of homosexuality. And any other person must respect the views of Ghanaian society. The CDD, which What's your is a, a, a far-right... Uh, 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 a liberal think tank here in Ghana carried out a uh, research which was published on the 1st of July. In fact, the academics who have uh, sent in a memo against this bill have two of their fellows, the CDD's fellows in there, the Center for, the, for, for, for Democracy in Ghana, Democratic Development. They, they've been clear. Ghanaians are 97% tolerant of Ghanaians of different ethnicity, 94% tolerant of people of different religion. 91% tolerant of persons of different political persuasions, 71% tolerant of migrants and foreigners, but only 7% tolerant of homosexuality. That is the system, that is the society of Ghana. What's your reaction the to the members of, of the LGBT community, sir, that we've been speaking to who tell us they're afraid for their lives when this bill passes, if this bill passes, that they're afraid, they're afraid to even leave their homes? Well, anybody who is engaged in an illegal activity should be afraid of the law, shouldn't you? Then there will be no essence of law. But let's be clear about this. The United States in 2021 remains the most dangerous place for homosexuals. As of June 2021, an independent story, a, a, a story run by the independent. Sir, the independent this is not paper, about the United States. This is, anyone, about this is about Ghana. This is about Ghana. homicide. No, no, this no. is this we is about Ghana, so I want to focus on Ghana, sir. Hang on, hang on. Let me let me let me ask the question. Let me, I'm, I'm let me ask you the question, Ghana. sir. This is about Ghana. You are as part of this bill legalizing conversion therapy, which UN experts consider torture. Do you believe that homosexuality can be medically treated? Well, tell me how individuals who are born men and decide to become women. That's not an answer. Do you believe that people can be cured of homosexuality by some sort of treatment? I was making the point that the individuals who decide to become transgender, who decide to change their sex from male to female, apart from undergoing surgery, also engage in hormonal treatment. Is that torture? 
Because I don't see how different hormonal treatment is from what you call conversion, conversion therapy, therapy. Is not the same as conversion therapy. These are very, very different. This is a false what's equivalence you're making, different? sir. No, what, what's the difference? I would need for you they, to, to. I am not. I am not a medical expert, experience. but it's been by you and experts who look into this have con considered conversion so therapy as torture. Expert, Larry, Larry, if you're not a medical expert, and I'm saying to you that we've spoken to the experts here in Ghana. And there is nothing different because conversion therapy is a hormonal treatment. And I'm saying to you that when the individuals choose on their own volition to change their sex, they undergo hormonal treatment. Men go and take estrogen shots to be able to develop female features. And that's the same thing. That is not the same therapy. thing. That is not the same thing. But I want to move away from that because you, you, you talked you about the United States. Doctor, so you you talked about the United States. This American organization Sorry? held a conference in Accra in 2019, and shortly after, you introduced a bail with the same language, including family values. So you're influenced by a right-wing organization, which is considered one of the most hateful organizations exporting hate around the world. Is that correct? It can't be farther away from the truth. Larry, I was never, myself and none of the seven other colleagues of mine, was at this conference. In fact, this conference came to my notice after the CNN's David McKenzie asked me about it. I have had absolutely no contact with the World Council of Families. You describe them in the way in which you want to describe them. But we also have groups from the United States that are supporting LGBTQ rights, that are, which is illegal in Ghana as we speak right now. Section 104 of our Criminal Offenses Act uh, makes it criminal. They're already trying to also influence Ghanaian stuff. This bill is in direct response. You say there was a conference here in 2019, a conference I'm not aware about. However, this bill is in, and I made a statement on the floor of the House in February, and my statement was clear. It was in response to the opening of an LGBTQ plus advocacy office in Ghana in January. That was supported by members right. of the diplomatic corps. So you want so to make it difficult for, for anybody to live an open, free life because of who they love in Ghana, and you want them to go to jail for 10 years, you're happy with that? Well, you haven't read my bill. It's a misinformation to say that anybody who's found guilty of a homosexual act to go to jail for 10 years. That's a misconception you're peddling, and you should not do they, that. They can go platform. to jail up to 10 years. This is just one of that the many penalties that is in the bill, sir, that you're encouraging Ghanaians to report anybody who is suspected of being LGBTQ. Is that correct? Larry, I would advise that you you put a job at what you're doing. Okay, if you want to put a spin, put a spin on a bill. Right, this is my bill that I've passed before Parliament. I'm going to read to you section six three of the bill, or clause six three of the bill, or six two of the bill. A person who commits an offence under paragraphs A, B, C, D, E, F, G of subsection one, which is the section that lists all the offences, commits a second degree felony and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not less than 750 penalty units and not more than 5,000 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment not less than three years or not more than five years or both. So when you talk about 10 years imprisonment for persons engaged in homosexual activities, you are misleading the world and that's unfortunate. So, all right, so you, you think, okay, 10 years is, not, is too much but five years is perfectly fine for somebody who's gay in Ghana to go to jail. Well, well, that is that is the that that is the punishment for a second degree felony in Ghana. And are the activity you, of homosexuality is a second degree felony. Honorable George, are you just a hateful person who does not want people who are different from you to have a life in Ghana? That is a defeatist approach to ask me a question, a defeatist line of questioning. That I'm a hateful person. If I'm a hateful person, we will not be protecting the rights of persons with LGBTQ and saying that you should not. They have a right. They have a right to a fair trial before the competent court of jurisdiction. Section 22 of our bill prohibits extrajudicial treatment. And you're not highlighting that part. That part is that already in the prohibition of extrajudicial treatment. A person commits a misdemeanor if that person verbally or physically abuses, assaults or harasses a person, A, accused of an offense under this act or suffering from any gender or sexual identity. A person who commits a misdemeanor under Section 1 is liable to a fine of not less than 500 penalty units or not more than 1,000 penalty units 
or a term of imprisonment not less than six months. So and you're cherry picking years. what seems so like a if, if positive a angle person, of a larger bail that would make it difficult. Right Honorable George, Honorable George, let me ask a question yes. here. You're cherry picking a part of the bail that a, a much wider bail that would make it difficult for people who are LGBTQ in Ghana to live. What would you do, sir, if your son or daughter was gay? Well, thankfully, I have two sons and a daughter, and none of them is gay. That's not the answer. What would you do if one of them was gay? You're asking me to go into the world of abstracts. I'm a, I'm a lawmaker. I deal with specifics. I deal with specific stuff. I don't deal in abstract. Maybe will you should be talking to a storyteller or something. Will you take okay, responsibility if, because of this bail, people who are going about their lives are attacked by Ghanaians or are harmed because it's legal to do so or people have been encouraged to do so or are suicidal for that matter Larry, take me, their lives because Larry, they can't Larry, live Larry. in that society well larry let me answer your question earlier when i was telling you that this year alone as of june this year alone 21 persons had been attacked and killed in the united states where lgbtq this rights is about are legal. ghana sir this is about ghana sir so let's focus on in, ghana well well if this is about Ghana, then stop trying to import American values into the reasoning of Ghanaian legislation. I am not an American. I am an African. I'm from Kenya. Well, Kenyan values are not the same as, Amer as Ghanaian values. We have different values. I That's... didn't say into Africa. I said into Ghanaian values. I'm a Ghanaian legislator. And just so you know, I represent a community or constituency that has two traditional areas. Before agreeing to push this bill, I met with my two traditional councils. I am a representative of the people who voted for me.